our today's topic is blood supply to the brain in cattle so before coming to the main topic that is the blood supply to the brain we must understand what is rmc it's an important structure that plays a very important role in supplying the blood to the different parts of the brain and then we will discuss about the circle of willis the reti mirabai cerebral it is an irregularly four sided arterial network or arterial mass that is enclosed in diaphragma cella and it is present around the pituitary gland so what is this diaphragma cella it is a fold of the dura mater that surround is the cella turcica of the sphenoid bone the reti mirabai cerebral it is placed beneath the dura mater and this arterial mass it is formed by the union of the branches of the different arteries first one is the cerebrospinal branch then comes the condylar artery and then comes the meningeal branches so we will discuss one by one so first one is the cerebrospinal branch so the cerebrospinal branch it arises from the vertebral artery and the vertebral artery as we know it itself arises from the costo cervical trunk of the axillary artery that means the intrathoracic branch of the axillary artery and the next one is the condylar artery the condylar artery it is arises from the occipital artery and the third one is the meningeal branches the meningeal branches they are of three types one is the anterior then middle and then posterior meningeal artery first is the anterior meningeal artery the anterior meningeal artery it is a collateral branch of internal maxillary artery and this artery it enters into the cranial cavity through a foramen which is known as foramen orbito rotundum and here in the cranial cavity it is involved in the formation of the rmc now coming to the next artery that is the middle meningeal artery first was the anterior meningeal second is the middle meningeal it is again a collateral branch of the internal maxillary artery and it enters into the cranial cavity through foramen ovale third branch is the posterior meningeal artery the posterior meningeal artery it arises from the occipital artery and it enters into the cranial cavity through foramen lacerum so first was the anterior meningeal then there was second was the middle meningeal and the posterior meningeal the anterior and the middle they are the collateral branches of the internal maxillary artery while as the posterior meningeal it is the collateral branch of the occipital artery so the three arteries that is the cerebrospinal artery is there meningeal branches are there and the condylar artery the involved in the formation of the arterial mass which is known as reti mirabai cerebri so there are two anterior angles that are present in the foramen orbito rotundum and they receive the two anterior meningeal artery so two anterior angles of the rmc they receive two anterior meningeal arteries and the two posterior angle they receive posterior meningeal arteries so there are two large branches that are formed by the condylar artery and the vertebral arteries these condylar artery and the vertebral artery they join together they form a large branch which joins at the posterior border of the rmc while as the lateral aspect that receives the middle meningeal artery so at the anterior there are anterior meningeal at the anterior angle there are anterior meningeal at the posterior there are posterior meningeal artery while as at the sides that receive the middle meningeal artery 
and at the posterior border there are two large branches present that are formed by the union of the condylar artery and the vertebral arteries now so here in the diagram you can see this hole it is the rmc and arterial network is there so here this is the anterior meningeal artery that enters through the foramen uh, orbito rotundum this from here this is the middle meningeal artery that enters through foramen ovale that on the lateral side and th this is here comes the posterior meningeal artery that enters through the foramen lacerum and here you can see this is the emergent artery which arises from the superior face of this reti mirabile cerebrae and here on the posterior border you can see this is the vertebral artery vertebral artery here it joins with the condylar artery and it joins at the posterior border of the rmc so this hole is this is known as reti mirabile cerebrae a vascular network that lies around the pituitary gland this is the one side of the rmc and here there is another part so coming to the blood supply to the brain so as we know the rmc what is an rmc so there are small branches which arise from the from the anterior and the middle part of the superior face of the rmc these branches they unite and they form a single trunk which arises on either side and this single trunk is known as emergent artery and it is this emergent artery which play very important role to supply the blood in different parts of the brain so the emergent artery they supply the blood to the different parts of the brain so on the right side there is right emergent artery and on the left side there is left emergent artery so these two emergent arteries they pierce the dura mater on either side of the pituitary stalk and then what happens to the emergent artery then they divides primarily into two branches one is the anterior and posterior primary branch the anterior primary branch and the posterior primary branch these branches they diverge from each other as they run in opposite directions now coming to the first branch that is anterior primary branch the anterior primary branch it is larger among the two it goes forwards and crosses the optic tract and here it divides into two arteries one is known as anterior cerebral artery and another is known as middle cerebral artery though the anterior cerebral artery it then it goes forwards and in front of the optic chiasma it gains the great longitudinal fissure with the corresponding branch of the opposite side so that means when the anterior cerebral artery reaches into the longitudinal fissure it accompanies the anterior cerebral artery of the opposite side and here a small communicating branch that connects these two anterior cerebral arteries the anterior cerebral artery it supplies blood to the anterior part of the cerebral hemisphere while as the middle cerebral artery middle cerebral artery it goes outwards it then gains the salivary fissure and it supplies to the lateral part of the cerebral hemisphere now coming to the next branch which is known as posterior primary branch the posterior primary branch it goes backwards and at the level of the interpeduncular fossa it divides into the posterior two posterior cerebral branches arise here which supply to the posterior part of the cerebral hemisphere then the posterior primary branch it then turns inwards and then goes backwards and it detaches anterior cerebellar artery which supplies to the anterior part of the cerebellum then the posterior primary branch continues along the median line and it joins with the branch of the opposite side and form a basilar artery 
What is basilar artery? The basilar artery it is formed by the anastomosis of the two posterior primary branches. The basilar artery then it passes along the ventral longitudinal fissure of medulla oblongata and then along the ventral median fissure of the spinal cord. Then it runs along the ventral median of the fissure of the spinal cord. Here it is named as ventral spinal artery or inferior spinal artery. So during the chorus of the basilar artery, it detaches posterior cerebellar artery. It gives branches to the pons and medulla oblongata. It also gives branches to the choroid plexus. The ventral spinal artery, which is the continuation of the basilar artery in the spinal cord. This ventral spinal artery is reinforced by the branches of intercostal artery. It is reinforced by the lumbar arteries, sacral arteries, and coccygeal arteries. So here in, in the diagram, you can see this is the emergent artery here on either side. This is the right emergent artery, this is the left emergent artery. Here it divides into two. This is the primary, anterior primary branch, and this is the posterior primary branch. These two arteries, they diverge and go opposite direction. That means the anterior primary branch, it goes, runs forward, crosses the optic tract here, and it divides into the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. The anterior cerebral artery it turns inwards in front of the optic chiasma, and here it runs in the longitudinal fissure with the corresponding branch of the opposite side. Tick. Now then comes this is the middle cerebral artery. Middle cerebral artery it gains this fissure, sideline fissure, and it supplies blood to the lateral aspect of the cerebral hemispheres. While as this anterior cerebral artery it supplies blood to the anterior part of cerebral hemisphere. Now, this is the posterior primary branch. There it goes backwards and at the level of interpeduncular fossa, it gives off two posterior cerebral branches and then it goes inwards and gives anterior cerebellar artery which supplies blood to the anterior part of the cerebellum here it then runs along the median line and joins with the cor opposed corresponding branch of the opposite side and it forms basilar artery this is basilar artery basilar artery it then runs along the ventral longitudinal fissure of the medulla oblongata and then here through the ventral median fissure of the supinal cord and this is known as here in the ventral supinal artery so during the chorus this basilar artery gives posterior cerebellar this is the posterior here posterior cerebellar artery which supplies blood to the posterior part of the cerebellum and it gives branches to the pons and to the medulla oblongata and also gives branches to the choroid plexus so this was about the blood supply to the brain so blood <laughs> supplies to the brain with the help of the emergent artery which arises from the superior face of the retina by cerebrae. So here in the diagram you can see this is the four-sided arterial network. This is known as RMC. This is the pituitary gland around the pituitary gland. These are the two anterior angles that receive the anterior meningeal artery. And here the posterior angle, they will receive the posterior meningeal artery. And here this is the posterior border here that receives a large blood vessel that is formed by the union of the condylite artery and the vertebral artery here. And 
here in this diagram you can see the blood supply to the brain in dorsal view this is the emergent artery it divides into the anterior primary branch and posterior primary branch here anterior primary branch divided into anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery that runs through the great longitudinal fissure along with the corresponding branch on opposite side this is the posterior primary branch which gives two posterior cerebral branches and then it gives the anterior cerebellar artery which supplies to the anterior part of this cerebellum now the posterior primary branch of the right and the posterior primary branch of the left they form this artery this is known as basilar artery basilar artery that runs through the ventral longitudinal fissure of the medulla oblongata and then through the ventral median fissure of the spinal cord as ventral spinal artery so during the chorus the basilar artery it gives this is the posterior cerebral artery and it gives branches to the pons to the medulla oblongata and to the choroid plexus no now coming to a very important term this is known as circular villus or circular arteriosus so the anterior cerebral artery with their anastomosis in front and the basilar artery that is formed by two posterior primary branches behind that make a vascular circle at the interpeduncular fossa at the base of the brain which is known as circular villus or circular arteriosus the main function it maintains the blood supply to the different parts of so the circle that we have already discussed it, that is formed by the anterior cerebellar artery that are present in front and behind there is the basilar artery which is formed by the union of and this circle it is known as circle of the villus so here in the diagram you can see this is known as circle of villus so in the front side there are the anterior cerebral arteries and on the behind there is basilar artery which is formed by the posterior posterior primary branches so this structure is is the circle of the villus thank you